To bring us, well, live analysis of that situation and what is going on on the ground, my colleague, Mark Namaswa, he is at Afia House. Mark, what exactly is uh, the situation there currently, of course, knowing that this industri industrial action continues? Please uh, bring us up to speed. Yes, okay, but at the moment we are having Kenya National Union of Nurses officials still hold up inside Afia House, and uh, the gate has been locked uh, after other medics came to show some solidarity uh, with their uh, fellow colleagues. For example, uh, clinical officers and nurses also came here to show uh, solidarity with other officials and try to uh, push or uh, try to pile some more pressure so that their, the negotiations concerning their salaries and uh, allowances can be factored in, can be remembered. Now, I'm joined by a clinical officer who has come out in this latest uh, show of solidarity, and uh, let him just uh, give us a glimpse of what brings them here. Okay, tell us your name. My name is Austin Oduro Tieno. I'm the National uh, uh, Deputy Secretary General of the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers. We have come here in a group of 17 health workers. As you can even see here, our union, we are saying no union, no peace. We've come here to join our other health workers in fighting for the grievances that the health, the health, the health team as a, as, a, as, a, as a whole. We are, we are not with the medical doctors who went further and are asking for 300% pay rise, contra contrary Okay, unlike us, we also need the 300% pay rise. Like job group G, we will expect the lowest paid health worker in job group G to earn 60,000, not 20,000. So we feel that the government has neglected us. Surely the government has neglected us, and as, as other health workers, we've come in in the umbrella of Kenya Health Professional Council, where we're also going to fight for that. The strike is it till on. But the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers, as I want to talk on behalf of the clinical officers, the government has neglected us for so long. We demand to have a union. That's the first thing. We are asking the government, we are compelling the government to ask the uh, Registrar of Trade Union so that we can get a union. Then secondly, if you know that the clinical officers are the core of health care in Kenya, primary health care, 99% of everything, all the health care activities happening in Kenya, even the HIV field, we are the custodian of HIV in Kenya. We do everything. We have the clinical officers and anesthetists. We have the dermatologist. That's that. Yeah. Sawa, sawa. Uh, Wakaba, this is, uh, those are some of the sentiments of one of the clinical officers that has uh, come out here to try and articulate their voice that they also need to be heard by the government when they are negotiating for the salaries and allowances of uh, medics in the country. Wakaba. Well, indeed, uh, right there, weighty matters that the doctors that work at the Kenyatta Nationals from the Kenyatta National Hospital, and that's the latest development with the doctors as at now. The doctors have insisted that the government should withdraw any court ruling or any warrant of arrest on the union um, officials, Peter. Well, indeed, that situation right there going from bad to us. Uh, thank you for that update, uh, Dr. Masi. Uh, 290 doctors also going on strike at uh, the uh, University of Nairobi, which, of course, is a training part of the Kenya National Hospital. Well, uh, this question uh, directly goes uh, straight back to you, Mark. We can see that this situation is developing, but in a much more negative way. Uh, do you think the government has been negotiating with, well, sincerity, as has been put by the doctors? Do you think they are intent uh, on bringing doctors back to work? The representatives of uh, medical practitioners is that uh, the issue about heading to court and uh, uh, the court instructing uh, representatives of uh, unions of medics to report to court on Tuesday and show cause why they should not be arrested is one of the reasons why uh, the talks are looking like they are hitting a, a dead end. And also at the moment, other cadres in the medical field, for instance, uh, we have been hearing uh, stories about or the articulation of issues from the side of nurses and doctors but now it turns out that other uh, professionals within the healthcare industry are also coming out to, to, to shout out and get their voice heard. They are saying that uh, it looks like they have been neglected. It's only about uh, those people higher up in the, in the, in the medical field, cadres are the ones that are being considered. Uh, other professions such as clinical officers as well as uh, lab technicians are also coming out to say that if you are increasing the salaries and allowances of doctors and medical officers, you should also increase uh, our hours also because they argue that they are also 
major drivers of uh, the industry. Remember that uh, in Kenya we have a big shortage of medical uh, doctors and most of the work is done by either nurses, clinical officers and lab technicians. They're the people that are basically in day-to-day -day contact with uh, uh, the wananchi. Now, they are arguing that if uh, they are not considered, then the entire uh, salary negotiations and allowances will not uh, make much sense since the majority of the healthcare workers uh, will be for forgotten. Like uh, at the moment, I also have uh, a nurse with me from Nairobi County, and they are saying that one of the issues is about uh, the having uh, n uh, nurses or doctors or medics uh, under the national government, as well as those ones under the county governments. Uh, kindly introduce yourself and tell us uh, what is it that has been happening about devolution and national government and medics. Thank you. My name is Eunice Ngari. I am talking on, the, on behalf of nurses because I'm the branch secretary in Nairobi City County. Uh, let me say that since the devolution, there has been a salary disharmony. That is when the county government, county government were, were taken in place, there were defunct system that is Kanjo, and devolved workers. And when we were merged together, it, it means that now these people had different salaries, and we, are different, uh, we have different salaries. This was because, theirs was because of a CBA which was signed a long time ago. For us who are devolved from the Minister of Health, we have a recognition agreement by the Minister of Health. Now, after the Council of Governors sat and they instructed the governors to sign our CBA, some governors were agreed, but others refused. In this case, we are saying we are not asking for any salary increment. Remember, we are only asking these disparities of remunerations. Some get this house allowance, the other gets uh, uh, other allowances differently. So what we are asking, harmonize the salaries so that there will be peace in the place of work. There's nothing much we're asking. Thank you very much. As we have heard, it's about harmonization of salaries. People are looking for equality in the medical industry. Back to you, Wakaba. Well, indeed, uh, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, that, of course, being an untidy situation, right, uh, the fact that uh, there are issues to do with salary harmonization amidst this, uh, the pay demands that other bits of, uh, other parts, rather, of the, the medical profession are asking. And to get that perspective, uh, yet again, we're going back to Dr. Masi, who is at uh, the, well, University of Nairobi, arm of KNH. And just to bring you into this conversation, uh, Dr. Tari, uh, the fact that uh, there are various bits of this conversation that are yet even to be discussed thoroughly at, at uh, the level of the ministry, what exactly is the perspective where you are? Um, uh, thank you, thank you, Peter. Uh, the perspective here, and which is primarily from the doctors, is that it's the government's prerogative to solve the current stalemate. They they are referring back to the constitution, where it's the government's task to provide health care to its citizens, and that's why they are passing the ball back to the government to make sure that they solve the current stalemate, uh, Peter. Mm -hmm. And well, uh, with me here, because we you remember I just said that we have uh, 290 doctors who work at the Kenyatta National Hospital who yes. are withdrawing their services. Mm -hmm. And with me here is uh, Mr. George Omondi, who is the Secretary General of the Nairobi branch of the UASU. And uh, Mr. Omondi, just uh, let us understand. Withdrawing 290 doctors from Kenyatta National Hospital surely is going to be catastrophic. Indeed it is, but they have made a decision based on the rights that they are pursuing. And I think we join them in pursuing those rights. We are a union like them. They have dual membership in both the professional union and the academic union. So us as academic staff, we stand with them because they are our members. And what they are pursuing is a right that we also subscribe to. So apart from uh, standing with them, is WASU actively engaged in the negotiations or mediating in the negotiations so that a solution is found as soon as possible? What we'll do at this moment is add our voice to the call to the government to find a quick way out of this quagmire. It is indeed a national crisis, and as you see, many people are going to suffer. They are currently suffering, and with this expanded participation, it can only get worse. A quick solution is what we are calling for, and the solution is known. It is simple, 
it is implementation of the CBA as agreed. It's a legally binding agreement and there's not much one can do. You can negotiate other things, but you cannot negotiate out of an agreement that you are party to. Yes. Thank you, thank you very much. Peter, I hand you back. We'll continue monitoring the situation and we'll keep updating Kenyans on what is happening currently with the doctor strike. Mm -hmm. Peter. Indeed, uh, thank you very much uh, there, Dr. Masi uh, Korel, coming to us live from uh, KNH, indeed, uh, the University of Nairobi, arm of that institution. And of course, also thanks to Mark Namasa, who was standing by for us at Afi House with an update on what exactly has been going on there. Thank you.